Guten Morgen, meine Freunde, and welcome back to The Past is a Foreign Country, the series where we stare into the moor of madness, and in a bizarre mixed metaphor, the moor of madness stares back at us. This week, our laser focus is brought to bear on the week ending February 2nd, 1964. At number 10 this week is our old chums Cliff Richards in the Shadows with an odd little song, Don't Talk To Him. Cliff's lady friend is being gaslighted by some blackguard, so Cliff gets into a bit of a counter-gaslight. A definite Beatle influence, particularly in the drumming, in this song written by Cliff and fellow Shadow and one time Olivia Newton-John Paramore, Bruce Welsh. Very pleasant indeed. At number nine, it's the king, baby. Elvis is back at his hip-swiveling, pelvitastic best in his movie Fun in Acapulco with this classic bossa nova baby. If this song doesn't fill your life with utter unbounded joy and make you want to rise from wherever you are and do a ridiculous dance, seek professional help. Number eight, Christmas records usually drop off the charts as soon as the day has passed, but Roy Orbison's monumentally sad pretty paper, which was one of the first hits Willie Nelson ever wrote, was still high on the charts two months after the season. One of the greatest pop, rock and roll, country vocalists of all time, and a man who with producer Frank Foster helped laid out the transition from rock and roll to rock, old Roy was phenomenally popular in Australia. I once knew a chap who had worked his way up from stage hand to stage manager at a local concert hall through the 60s, 70s and 80s, and if you ever asked him who the best act to work with, he would unhesitatingly say Roy Orbison. A frequent visitor, he always remembers names, was unfailingly gracious, and always put on a tremendous show. Who, you might ask, were the worst to work with? He said Creedence Clearwater Revival, because he'd never seen four people who hated each other so much, and Bob Marley's People. Number seven, there's not a moment's drop in the excitement as the Dave Clark Five storming glad all over spins in at number seven. Full of infectious vivacity and beetles cooks, there isn't a moment wasted nor undevoted to lessening the energy. Respectable hit makers at home in Britain, the DC Five are absolutely huge in the US, bagging 17 top 40 hits. It could be argued that Mike Smith was a presentable singer at best and Clark himself was hardly in the top flight of drummers, but their music was successful precisely because it needed a shouter up the front and a basher at the back. A legendary Australian group The Atlantics were in at number 6 with their awesome surf epic The Crusher. The first Australian band to write their own hits, The Atlantics sounded different from their American surf rock counterparts such as The Ventures because they took on the tonal influences of The Shadows and had one mega hit in Bombora, number 510 on the list of biggest ever hits in my hometown, ironically one spot higher than Good Vibrations by those erstwhile masters of surf music, The Beach Boys. Their next release in March was War of the Worlds, a thrilling slice of space rock long before Hendrix or Sid Barrett, which was bizarrely banned by many stations. Who bans an instrumental record? Let's catch our breath with some factacular fun facts before we careen off into the top five. Movers and shakers this week I can't give you, as no chart was published for the previous two weeks, but I can tell you that the emeritus record on the charts was Jimmy Gilmer and the Fireball's Notorious Sugar Shack. Notorious because when it made number one on the US R&B charts in November 1963, the powers that be decided if records that white bread and pop could make number one on the R&B chart, there was no point in having an R&B chart, and suspended it for a year, where it came back as the soul music chart with a new metric. Other classic records on the top 40 this week, but lower than the top 10, included surf music stunners Hey Little Cobra, Surfin' Bird, and He's My Blonde-Headed Stompy Wompy Real Gone Surfer Boy by local princess Little Patty. And big UK hits Geronimo by The Shadows and You'll Never Walk Alone by Jerry and the Pacemakers, a song which naturally I despise. Number one in the States was I Wanna Hold Your Hand by the lovely Beatles, and in the UK, Needles and Pins by The Searchers sat on the throne at number one. Number one album was, well, I can't tell you, we didn't have a local albums chart until 1965, but it was probably My Fair Lady.
Number five is a weird little record by an interesting, that is tragically interesting, person in Kathy Kirby's spirited and slightly hysterical retread of Doris Day's Secret Love. The song actually sounds cool in the rocking go-go beat arrangement it's given, but Kirby's voice is, let's say, an acquired taste. It's not like she discriminates, sharp or flat, she'll sing them both. A huge star in England famed for her blonde bombshell image, I'm surprised that Morrissey didn't fetishise her on a Smiths album cover. And a Eurovision runner-up, Kirby quickly descended into poverty and mental illness once her career ended. After her retirement in 1983, interest in her career was maintained by a strong gay following, but her life became ever more turbulent and pathetic until her death from a heart attack in 2011. Beatlemania arrives in its first wave at number four with She Loves You in its fourth month on the charts. This is simply one of the greatest and most important records ever made. It is, for pop music, the equivalent of that moment in The Wizard of Oz where it all goes from sepia to technicolour. And the key to it is that it's the record where they finally let Ringo off the leash. For their previous record, From Me To You, he plays a twee and polite little twist beat. But here, he is the hammer of the gods, assaulting his tubs with an intelligence violence that elevates, propels, magnifies the arrangement and spurs Lennon on to drive his voice to sing over it. This is a glorious record. This is one of the central glories of the 1960s. More by the Beatles up next. By Easter, they'd have seven records in the top ten, as Love Me Do in only a second week on the charts logged at number three. Shock horror, but in the grand scope of things Beatley, I don't care much for Love Me Do. I think it's a trite and silly song and quite a boring record. I'm struggling, in fact, to think of a weaker single that the Beatles released. The Deputy Prime Minister of the Charts this week was Daisy Pedal Picking by our old friend Jimmy Sugar Shack Gilmer and the Fireballs, whose literally chart-busting hit still malingered this week on our charts at number 40. Interestingly, the Fireballs were a mainly instrumental group who hired Gilmer as a pickup vocalist and he would drift in and out of the band across the years. From Clovis, New Mexico, and produced by Norman Petty of Buddy Holly fame, the group were schooled to be Holly knockoffs from day one, going so far as to overdub some of Holly's demos in the late 60s and try and flog them as newly discovered material. Daisy Pedal Picking was the embodiment of the oldest rule in pop music. If you've had a hit, hit it again. And this is a Sugar Shack knockoff par excellence. And now it's time to unveil the number one single this week in the city by the Serpentine River, ringed by the seven hills which I call home. I Want to Hold Your Hand by The Beatles. Seven weeks in and due not to leave the charts until the end of May. This is, according to David Kent, who also has a super secret scoring algorithm, is the biggest single charting hit ever in this town. A record of such monumentally consequential importance, possibly the first record where rock music begins to diverge from and become distinct from rock and roll, although the argument could also be made for She Loves You in that regard. In terms of the most important, most far-reaching records ever made, it ranks with Crazy Blues, T for Texas, Warbash Cannonball, Body and Soul, Ida Red, Woody and You, or Rock Around the Clock and its cultural impact is incalculable. Thus, we depart my sunny city in the sun to return next week in a different year to a different world. The super secret scoring algorithm ranks this week at a stonking 7.3 out of 10. And with that, all that remains is to encourage our comments and even likes and subscriptions and express my fervent hope to see you all again next week where the past is a foreign country.